evening, everybody, and welcome. The butterfly you're seeing on your screen is a male brimstone butterfly. He's taking nectar on a devil's bit scabious plant in the late summer. This butterfly lives about a year. It's our longest lived butterfly species and a real joy to see in spring. Beautiful daffodil yellow. It's a real pick me up after a long winter. Very rarely seen in butterflies, but I thought as a headline species, it's nice to start with a, a sense of happiness. Butterfly life cycles. All butterflies have a four stage life cycle. So you have the egg stage, which depending on the species can last for five days to eight months. The larval stage, again, one to 10 months, depending on the species and sometimes time of year. Pupil stage can last as little as nine days and as long as 11 months. And the adult stage, five days to 11 months, again, depending on the species and environmental conditions. Now, this is a small tortoiseshell butterfly. And it's a little video clip and she's laying eggs on the underside of a nettle leaf. And female butterflies are usually quite discreet when they're laying eggs. They don't show themselves off. It's a vulnerable time for them they have to be settled somewhere. They're vulnerable to predators. And she's laying at the top of the nettle plant. This is a very tall nettle plant in a lovely warm nettle bed. And she's curling her abdomen onto the undersurface of the leaf and she's laying eggs in clusters. So the larvae will all hatch together. And they're, they're social caterpillars, small tortoiseshell caterpillars. The, this butterfly has chosen the topmost leaf of the nettle because this is the part of the plant that contains the most moisture and the most nutrients, especially nitrogen. Very important for protein for growth. Now, this is a photograph of that same leaf, and you can see the egg mass. And although you see a small number of eggs there, there are actually, there are actually hundreds of them. This is a egg mass of a marsh fritillary. And there's about 200 eggs there, again, on the underside of a devil's bit scabious leaf. And they hatch. And again, these are social caterpillars and you can see them massed together. Social caterpillars mass together to heat each other up so they can metabolize and digest their food. This butterfly overwinters. And here is its hibernaculum web, the web, a dense web, which is waterproof. And it'll spend, the caterpillars will spend the winter inside that. Now, if you look at them now in spring, they're not brown anymore, they're black. And black is a great color because it helps you, helps the animal absorb heat and light. Whereas pale brown is less effective in that way. And here they are basking on a larval web in early spring. And what they've done is these caterpillars have actually fed. And what they're doing now is they're undergoing a long, food digestion process. So that's what they do. They're, they mass together to digest their food. A lot of the social caterpillars spend relatively little time eating and most of the time resting and digesting their food. Now you can see them lying there in the open. These are spiny caterpillars. Birds won't touch them because they're, they're, they're not um, palatable. The spines sting the bird's mouth so they won't touch them. So these caterpillars can afford to be seen by birds. Now here it is in the final stage. Caterpillars go through various stages before they reach their full stage. And this is the sixth or, and final instar of the marsh artillery. There's this chrysalis or pupa. The pupa is toxic to birds. So again, it can form it, afford to form it on the upper surface of a leaf and it stands out so it's, it's not edible. And these have hatched, these marsh artillery have hatched and they're mating. The male is on the right, female is on the left. You notice her much larger abdomen. And if you look at this mated female here, if you look at the tip of the abdomen, near the tip of the abdomen, just up from it, there are two, I don't know how clear that is in the picture, there's two tan patches. And the male has actually sealed her genitalia to prevent her mating again, to ensure that only his offspring have a chance of taking to the air. So that's his strategy to make sure that his offspring are the ones to survive. And the cycle is beginning again with the female marsh artillery laying her eggs on the underside of the leaf. Marsh artillery is our only legally protected butterfly. It's in fact, it's our only legally protected invertebrate. It's protected under the EU Habitats Directive. Needs very, very wild sites, not likely to be found in the garden except the wanderer. Now, just introduce a quick introduction to Ireland's butterflies. We have 35 species, 32 of them are year round residents. We have three migrants, 24 are grassland and marsh species, 10 are scrub and woodland species, and two are raised and blanket bog species. Now, this is the cryptic wood white. 
and this likes scrubby grasslands and untidy areas along hedges where there's tall vegetation. This butterfly is, has a, a, an identical twin, believe it or not, called the wood white. The wood white doesn't visit gardens. It only exists in the barren and in areas of exposed limestone in Mayo and Galway. It's one of our rarer species. And they, these two species look identical in all respects. The egg, caterpillar, pupa, and adults are identical in appearance. Females of both species recognize their own males of their own species. So the female of one species, or the, a female cryptic wood white will not mate with a male cryptic, with, with a male wood white. And female wood whites will not mate with a male cryptic wood white. However, these two occupy different habitat types Type, so they very rarely meet. They have a really, really strange courtship ritual. Both species, the courtship ritual is very similar. The male unroll sits opposite the female. He unrolls his proboscis, his tongue, and he actually strikes her on the hind wing and either side of the hind wing and moves his head to and fro while he does it. It's really, really comical to look at. Common birds for trefoil is one of its important breeding plants. This is really easy to grow, really common. It's a legume member of the pea family. And um, it flowers in from say May right the way through to September. Big burst of flowering in, in May and, and June, but it flowers on and off the summer. Great value for pollinators, for, for bees, butterflies, moths, hoverflies, highly recommended. And not only that, it feeds butterfly larvae as well, not just the adults feeding on the nectar. This is a clouded yellow butterfly. Um, it's one of our three regular migrants. Here it is nectaring on red clover. Again, it's all, red clover is also a food plant, caterpillar food plant, and so birds for trefoil is also used by this beautiful migrant as a caterpillar food plant. This comes to us from North Africa and Southern Europe. It's a really powerful flyer. Now, this is probably familiar to everybody. This is the large white, this is the male. He has no spot on the upper side of, of his wings, clear white wings. Here he is basking on a leaf in, in May, and they have two or three generations a year. Um, this butterfly is well known as a destroyer of brassicate crops, and there's the female. Now she does have spotting on her wings. It's, quite a very, it's a very large and rather showy butterfly, and if it wasn't such a gardener's enemy, I think people would like it even more. I mean, I, I find it a beautiful species. Here it's feeding on common knapweed, and there's its smaller uh, cousin, the small white, the pair is mating. The male has the wings open wide. He has two spots on his forewing and the female, one, one spot on each forewing. The male has two spots on each forewing. And there's the underside, which actually looks very like the underside of the large white as well. And it's again, nectaring on common knapweed. And here's the caterpillar of the small white. And again, it's devastating a cabbage, as you can see. This caterpillar is edible, it is palatable to birds. So it blends in with its food plant, it has to. Now, this is a, another relative of the small large white. This is called the green veined white. This is not considered a pest species. This is a dainty species, lives in, in damp meadows, ditches, regularly visits gardens for, for especially to feed as the adult. The male is on the left, female is on the right. Male, again, is one spot before wing, female is two. This is a really fascinating species of butterfly. The, males, the male has um, an aphrodisiac on his wings, a, a pheromone called citral. And citral is used in perfume. And the, if you ever touch that male butterfly's wings, sniff your fingers, a beautiful, fragrant lemon smell it's intoxicating and it's certainly intoxicating for the female because she succumbs to his attentions very quickly they mate very quickly however there's a bit of a sting in the tail here before mating is complete he showers her with an anti-aphrodisiac called methyl salicylate and methyl salicylate is used in human medicine as an anti-inflammatory and a similar chemical to a similar compound to methyl salicylate is used in aspirin now, why does he shower, deposit this um, anti-aphrodisiac on her abdomen? Well, for the same reason that marsh artillery seals the abdomen, the, the, um, 
the genitalia of the female marshal. He wants to deter other males. He wants it, it's, it's a deterrent to other males to mate with her. Um, now, this has a very important role in, in reproduction because if the female was still attracted to other males, whenever she flew, when she flies along low along the ground searching for larval food plants, she'd be harassed by a number of males, and this would certainly draw the attention of birds. As I said at the outset, female butterflies now laying their eggs, they like to do it really inconspicuously because they're very vulnerable when they're laying. They don't want to draw attention, and nothing draws attention more than three or four males chasing after you, especially as they're bright white and they really draw attention. Now, however, this anti-aphrodisiac, methylsalicylate, it wears off after a couple of days or it wears thin and males then realize this and try their luck at mating again. Some females will mate up to five times and when the male mates with her, he actually judges from the level of, of methylsalicylate, the anti aphrodisiac he actually judges her mating history and he can actually adjust the amount of sperm and nutrients he gives her. Now, the nutrients, which include protein and other nutrients, not only feed the eggs, they actually help the female to live longer. So sex is good for the female. The more sex she has, the longer she lives. And she lays larger eggs with a better survival chance. So a remarkable species shows you the complex nature of butterflies. They're not simply casual things just flit around the place. The male, by the way, loses up to 15% of his body weight in transferring these nutrients to the female. And there they are, they're on the side. The vein, see the vein markings? None of the other whites have those distinctive vein markings. So that's a really good distinguishing feature for the green veined white. And there's an, another shot of the underside. As you can see, they vary a lot in the depth of color on the, of the uh, hind wing and the tip of the forewing. And again, it's on our old friend, common knapweed. There's one of its larval food plants, um, cuckoo flower or lady smock. Beautiful spring flower, Lovely, loves wetlands. If you put a pond in your garden and a wetland, grow some of these and you'll, you'll get green veined white coming to breed. Beautiful, beautiful butterfly, orange tip male, perched on cuckoo flower again, uses a nectar source and as a breeding plant. So it serves more than one function. There's the underside, he's perched on a, a willow um, flower. There's the female, she lacks the orange. Well, you see that yellow dusting on the hind wing? That distinguishes the, the, the orange tip found in Ireland to the orange tip found in Britain. The ar orange tip found in Ireland is subspecies Hibernica. The British one is all white in this area, it doesn't have a yellow dusting. And there's the underside of the female there. And there's her flower again, her flowering plant. And she actually lays on the pods or the flower, the base of the flower, and the caterpillar eats the pods. The caterpillar is cannibalistic. The, it does a little tour of the, the flowers and any other eggs it finds, it destroys them. Now, you might say, well, how does it get on with the green veined white, which lays eggs in the same plant? Well, there's an ecological separation there. The orange tip lays at the top of the plant, green veined white lays on the leaves at the bottom. So the larvae don't actually compete. Beautiful, beautiful butterfly, small copper, gleams in the sun like a newly minted coin. It really does. Stunning. The sexes are alike. That's actually a female, but the male looks the same. There's the underside, beautiful reddish bar. Again, the Irish subspecies different to the one in England. The, the band on the hind wing is, is, is not as vivid red in the English one. And the underside of the hind wing in the English one is kind of a grayish brown rather than gray like in the Irish one and common sorrel and sheep sorrel. This, you can put that in your salad, by the way. That is a, a food plant used by that species. Now, another butterfly, common blue. Not, not a very frequent garden visitor like the small copper, but I do get them in my garden. Um, lovely, lovely butterfly, shining blue. And there's the female, which is one of our most beautiful butterflies, in my opinion. The female in that species, in this common blue, is really variable. The amount of brown they have on their, their wings varies a lot. Here's a, an example with very little, small amounts of brown or wing. This is called the Maris Calor form. Some people give it subspecies ranking. And it's believed that the blue suffusion is an adaptation or response to our cooler, uh, cloudier climate. We don't get that in the south of England, for example. And there's a mating pair. 
And again, common birds for trefoil is food, is a, a butterfly nectar, is the nectar plant for the adult and plant for the larvae. Very similar looking butterfly, holly blue. Common blue grassland, holly blue shrubs and trees. If you see a blue butterfly flying high up over a tree, it's a holly blue. If you see a butterfly fluttering low down, it's a common blue. There's the male in spring, two or three generations a year like the common blue. There's the female on dogwood. And see the black wing tips? She has, there's a, there's a seasonal dimorphism here. The next generation has broader black wing tips than the spring generation. So look at the summer generation. See the black wing tips? Much broader. That's how you can tell what time of the year the photograph is taken. Also, the spring generation lays its eggs on embryonic holly berries. But in, by the time summer arrives, those holly berries are hard and not edible by the larvae. So it switches its food plant to ivy, lays its eggs at the base of ivy flowers, which are just beginning to develop. So it's, it switches food plant preference depending on time of year. There's the underside, really lovely. This is the ultimate garden butterfly, the holly blue. It's actually, it's actually probably more common in gardens than it is in the general countryside. It loves gardens. If you have holly and ivy, it'll turn up, especially if it's growing against a south or west facing wall. And in fact, the, 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 more sub, the more urban the garden is, the more they like it. They love that urban heat island effect. There's this caterpillar, little slug-like shape, uniscoform shape, pinkish, lovely pinkish hue there is on a holly leaf. And it doesn't matter if it's variegated holly or your native common holly, it's happy breeding and breeding on either, as long as it's female that produces berries. There's a variegated holly there and it bred on, that plant is outside my back door in my patio and it breeds on that plant every year. What a beautiful butterfly, red admiral, one of our largest and a really, re our most common regular migrant. Um, beautiful butterfly, just perched there, large as well perched on ivy, this one has just emerged. And if you can see the red fascia has a white spot, that, that's an aberration. A lot of them have a clear red band there. They don't have a white spot, but, but this, this aberration is reasonably common. Usually the female has this aberration. Now it's a migrant from Southern Europe. And there's its, one, its caterpillar though, it occurs in a variety of color forms on stinging nettle. Now, if you look at the bit of webbing on to the, above it and to the, to the right of it, I actually, this was in a tent. I opened the tent to get a clear view. They, they're tented larvae to protect themselves from wasps. Here's a lovely butterfly here, Painted Lady, one of the greatest migrants we have. It, like the Red Admiral, it doesn't just come here in spring, it leaves here in late summer. It comes and goes and flies at high altitude, which is why we hardly ever see it leave. And this is a, a little video clip of it here. And here she is feeding on common knapweed, our old friend. And this is a really, really powerful migrant. Great, my great years of abundance for this for 1996, 2009, and 2019, when there were literally millions. We think the 2019 migration migrants originated in the Middle East, probably from Syria. The 2009 ones originated from Marrakesh, in Morocco. Um, so they might not originate in the same part of Europe. In, in the southern coastal areas of Europe, they're probably found all year round. And there it is, beautiful butterfly there. She's beginning to open her wings as she's feeding on the knapweed in late summer. And what she's actually doing is, and you can see she's not flitting around with wasting lots of energy. She's actually building up fat reserves. She's converting the nectar to fat to build her reserves up for migration. That's what she's actually doing. So it's a very, feeding up is a very serious business. Um, that's one of his breeding plants, marsh thistle. Spear thistle and creeping thistle are other breeding plants. Small tortoise shell, the one you find hibernating in your house every year. Here she is here, really familiar, well-loved butterfly, really common, a nettle feeder. There's its caterpillar on nettle and it has a close relative peacock, one of our most beautiful butterflies. The, the but this butterfly can hiss like a snake by rubbing a tiny wing against its forewing to, to worry mice and other small predators. There's its larvae, spiny, nettle feeders, not liked by, by birds, they won't touch them. Comma, our most recent new addition to our butterfly fauna, beautiful male butterfly there on ice plants, sedum spectable. 
Um, beautiful species. I, I'm responsible for finding it, uh, for confirming breeding. I found it, first found it breeding on 17th of May, 2014 in Kulafuka Wood in Carlo. There's the underside, you see the comma mark? The lovely C mark, which gives it its name. And here he is here feeding on a bramble inflorescence. Now, do you see the oak leaf outline? It actually hibernates in, in, among fallen leaves in woodland. And you see the greenish, kind of a mossy, moldy look to the outer side of the wings, of the edge of the wings. It makes it look like a bit of moss. So it's really beautifully camouflaged against birds finding it. Now there's this caterpillar, really nice caterpillar actually, lovely rusty caterpillar and, and lovely ice white as well. Silver artillery, our largest one, not common garden visitor, not a breeder, but does visit gardens. The male has the, the bars on his wings, the female has the spots. And there it is, they're silver washed because you see that silver wash on the underside of the hind wing, feeding on creeping thistle. Violets are its larval food plant. This is a speckled wood, quite a common butterfly in gardens if you have shrubs and wild grasses. Um, two or three generations a year. The only Irish butterfly that overwinters in both the larval and pupa form, and there's a mating pair that was taken in my garden. Where there's one of its food plants, wild grasses, coxfoot grass. Meadow brown, really, really common, doing really, really well in, 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 uh, in Ireland. Um, even on fertilized grassland, it can still persist, albeit in lower numbers. There's a mating pair there. Um, there's a, a male basking on bracken, and the female has a broader orange patch, as you can see, than the male. Now, you might think, oh, it's common, it's fine, that's great, no, go home, relax. Common species need to be monitored too, because we tend to monitor the rarer species and the habitat specialists, but if common species are in decline, it's a really, really serious indicator of general environmental degradation. So we really do need to keep an eye on our common species too. We can't ignore them. In Malta, which is um, in Southern Europe, that's the meadow brown is, is on the brink of extinction. Now, that's amazing. I mean, it sounds like a butterfly almost impossible to get rid of, but there's an example of, of a butterfly that was 20 years ago was common there and now is on the brink of extinction probably due to pesticide use and climate change. So very grim. Coxfoot again is one of its food plants and also the finer grasses. This is a ringlet butterfly. And if you look, the male is almost black when he's fully in, when he out first. Again, it's a grassland species, very often occurs with the meadow brown, but likes shadier, damper grasses. So if you have a hedge, um, especially the north side of a hedge or a hedge in, with a bit of shade, Casting a bit of shade on the grasses, this one will appreciate that. And you can see why it's called the ringlet, beautiful ringlet markings on the underside of the wings. And again, coxfoot is one of its favorite grass. People generally won't tolerate coxfoot because it's a clump forming grass and they want, a, they want a smooth golf course type lawn. You need to be a little bit messy if you want butterflies.